peeps, welcome to another video. Today I am sorting out my fabric stash and we have a very exciting pile of lovely slinky and not so slinky silks. All of the silks. I am really looking forward to and at the same time dreading doing this pile because all of these fabrics are so slippery and it took so long to get them into this kind of shape organisation. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's going to be interesting sorting them out and seeing what kind of a mess I get into as we progress. I have my trusty assistant judging me from the back of the bed and sitting there just saying you bought what now? Uh, but yeah, should we get started? Right, first up is this which is stretch silk from Ditto Fabrics and I didn't buy very much of it and it's very narrow so I've got I think one and a half meters yeah one and a half meters but it has like lots of stretch and no stretch that way but lots of stretch that way I have no idea what I bought this for it's like it is completely see-through so it would be useless as a top yeah very very narrow very narrow it's about 75 centimeters wide so I think I saw it on their website and I was just like, ooh, stretchy silk. That could be interesting. And yeah, I, I literally have no idea what to do with this. Now, I have quite a lot of stretchy white fabrics so I was thinking that need lining. And silk is obviously breathable, but also it kind of can be very warm to wear. So mate, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what I bought this with the intention of of making it's it's not it's not soft and slippery silk either it's kind of got a crepe like texture but yeah look how stretchy that is like that's mega stretchy so um i think i bought this as a curiosity and given that i don't think it was cheap like i say ditto fabrics i bought my parity canvas that i made my looping jacket out of from there and I think I was just like oh stretchy silk I think I've said that like three times now as well haven't I but yeah um help what 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 would you do with this 1.5 meters long 75 centimeters wide very stretchy on the gray uh, on the cross on the yeah on the grain is that I always get confused I cross grain down on the grain across yeah so very stretchy on the grain no stretch on the cross grain what what do i do like seriously what do i do with that anyway it's pretty right next up okay so i have like large scraps of this it is a silk and velvet devore from truro fabrics they don't have any more of this colourway and I made a Mother of the Bride outfit for a customer two years ago out of this. I then stupidly showed it to another customer for a Mother of the Bride outfit without double checking that I could get hold of it and she fell in love with it. And then I had, uh, when we were up it, at the Goldhawk Road, I spent an entire day trying to find a replacement for it in every single shop and just nobody did anything like this whatsoever. So yes that's a very good lesson to learn if you do work for other people was make sure that when you show them fabrics that you can actually get more of it before they fall in love with it. But luckily she found and fell in love with the Liberty Silk so that was what happened with that one but yeah. Yeah. I have very decent sized scraps left over from the original Mother of the Bride dress and I've kept them because I want to make some kind of a top out of it and I have I think there is about a meter there but not whole there's bits cut out of it and then I have like I say large pieces like this and I think what I want to do is yeah look there's another fairly decent ish sized scrap so I think what I want to do is make something along the lines of the sea change top from Lily Sage and Company which I will put up here now as I said before I think I've said this to you before I've made that top before but I made it out of a sheer jersey which had like ribs on it and it was way too stiff for the type of top that I particularly like 
but I thought this is this is super super drapey I thought that this as that top would look really really nice but again I don't have very much of this fabric and what I do have will require some very clever cutting so I need to make that top out of something else first that works so drapey fabric and see if I like it but yeah another another scrappy piece I, th I it's just so pretty it's really really pretty so that is what I'm thinking of for that although if I don't like it I am very much open up to options for different tops to make with that I'm not gonna try and hold it up because it's gonna go everywhere but I'm gonna say I have a meter of it next up so back when oh gosh when I got my very first computer, which probably around about mm, 2002, that I got my own, because I was living by myself in London and I, I, I'd, I'd earned enough one night to go and buy myself a brand new computer and it was 800 pounds and that was a lot of money back then. And that was, I got, uh, I think it was a Dell. I hadn't fallen down the apple wormhole then and it was a teeny tiny little 16 inch screen with the you know the really big back on it and I got I got Final Fantasy 11 and there went my life with the online multiplayer role-playing game and I also discovered eBay so my vintage wardrobe collection went through the roof and then I also discovered fabrics on eBay which you will have seen when I was doing my sort of miscellaneous ones there was quite a lot of eBay fabrics in there but this was from Hong Kong and it's again it's kind of the the butterflies it's silk the the butterflies are sort of solid but then everything else is very sheer and there's like it's the the, the butterflies and the flowers are Sh uh, sort of satiny shiny and then everything else is very sheer now I bought this one and I've actually made a beach cover up out of it but my sewing skills back then are appalling in fact do I still have it I do I do still have it right oh gosh now I don't I, the the edge the selvage of this is actually very attractive so I used the selvage as much as I could oh my goodness but when I couldn't oh, this is so bad this is so so bad look at the state of that I mean I tried a narrow rolled hem but it's not remotely narrow I mean it's it's enclosed everything but and I suppose it's it is neat but just no 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 and so what this is oh god I hadn't even cut off the threads <laughs> oh dear this is not good right so um oh and yeah that's that's the oh man Okay, so the, the premise behind this is that it is a basically giant cover-up. Let's see if I can still fit into it. Don't know if I'm going to be able to because I was a lot skinnier. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so. Oh, I can't. I don't know if I can get it over my hips. Oh, gosh. Um, you know, I think if I wasn't wearing lots of clothes, I'd be all right. Right, so the it's got basically a line of stitching down there and then a line of stitching from the base up to about there and then it's supposed to be kind of like a togery drapey thing and then what I think I was planning on doing I think I'm gonna have to get back to show you guys I think let's see if this works <laughs> yeah so I've made this one super long and I didn't intend it to be super long so I think what as you can see only the bottom of me but I think what I was intending on doing was perhaps was it was it yeah I was going to run some elastic up this side up this yeah I was going to run elastic up this side so that it kind of went up 
there and then it was long and floaty and, and drapey this side. Um, actually, you know what? I mean, me looking in it now, I'm just like, oh my God, that's terrible. But given that this is one of the first silks that I'd ever worked with, that is actually quite straight, isn't it? Like, that, you know, and this was my own design. I didn't have a pattern. I was just making this up as I go along. So that's actually not as bad as I thought it was. And I can get into it, which is nice. But yeah, over, over a bikini and maybe some shorts. That's actually not horrendous. I mean, it's not good. Cause like you're meant to follow the original line of stitching and I don't know if you can see like just random couple of lines of stitching all over the place there. So that's not, it's not, great <laughs> aware of that very aware of that <laughs> just not cut any of the threads off at all <laughs> but oh, I'm glad I've kept that I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna try that so yeah I'm gonna run run some elastic up that side just so it gathers up a little bit because I think it wasn't overly flattering because it was too long but yeah so um there we go i mean when i say that i did this by myself there was no pattern it's not like it's rocket science is it <laughs> there's two rectangles of fabric that i've got the selvages on each end and then hemmed the top and the bottom but i think i was quite impressed with myself for that but i don't think i've ever used this one but actually what i've got left this little remnant could be a really good sea change top um wearable muslin for the Devore because I can see myself wearing this one as again a sort of a beach cover up with some some of those wrap oh those wrap trousers that I want to make yeah so those wrap trousers in a really nice white cotton and then this over the top I think that would look really cute so that yeah I've got a meter and a half of this I know that because I'd ordered five meters and I remembered yeah so yeah <laughs> yeah okay so there we go awesome I will I will do better with the seams right so this next one is also from Hong Kong and I don't think I have this this anymore but this is so I'm gonna put this picture up so I went out in public like this and this stuff this stuff is see-through so this stuff is like is see-through right okay so but there are giant, giant opaque butterflies on it so I went out in public and I'd the reason I did that one with two panels is because I'd made one of those with this but I just folded it over and I'd cut a hole in the top and then hemmed it and I went out in public a couple of times with that outfit on I had a pink balconet bra on so a fairly covering bra and I remember pink hot pant like boy shorts underwear matching set and I wore it under this with my bright my not my bright pink my uh, pale pink those shoes that's how long I've had these shoes for and I, at the time I as you will see in this photo I have a waist length blonde hair and I went out in public like that I went out clubbing like that that was yeah I didn't think anything of it and I'd like that figure back please very much but that was the when I was at eight and a half stone which I don't think I would be able to get well I could get back to but I wouldn't be able to do anything but exercise all the time and never eat cake like we did this morning so that's not going to happen what I would like to get back to is 10 stone and I'm working on it I'm getting there I'm you know I put a bit back on since I stopped exercising, but it's getting there. Anyway, tangent again. Sorry, we come here to talk about fabric, not my weight. <laughs> but I went out in public like that. I did. I, I did, and I felt really fancy. And I got lots of compliments on my dress from girls, not just men. I have some of it left. How much do I have left? I have, oh, quite a lot left. I have a good two meters left of this I could make a second make the same dress over again 
<laughs> I really should not wear that out in public again. But isn't it pretty? Oh, I wonder if I've got enough to make a kimono out of this. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. That would be really nice. Actually, this one's behaving itself a little bit better. Yes, done, done job. Because again, I can see myself flouncing around in that during the summer months. I do flounce quite, quite, quite a lot in the summer months. Uh, this next one is all the way from Saudi Arabia. It is 100% silk. It is super slippery but it's this beautiful royal blue colour. Now this was actually bought to line Big Bird's wedding dress, but Big, but Big Bird's wedding dress is an unlined dress. So it never got used and it's ended up in my stash and I'm keeping it because yeah, it's so pretty and it's lovely and there's a metre of it. In fact, is there? I think there might be two. I remember we bought whatever we did with this silk. Yeah, there's two metres. So we bought two meters of this silk and um, so I could line the bodice of it, of the dress. And then we bought five meters of, oh, so much silk. We bought five meters of a polyester satin or polyester silk type that matched, that was exactly the same color. But the skirt of Nia's dress was huge and this stuff was expensive and because we needed so we had 10 meters of the original silk that the dress was made out of but because we needed so much to line it um we decided that silk for the bodice and then polyester for the skirt and again we didn't end up using it i actually because of the amount of body that she wanted in it i ended up using cotton lawn and netting on the inside i remember cutting one of these out in the polyester and it just being the piggiest thing to cut out it was horrible and it was just like, no, I, no, I love you, but no. And I think the cotton lawn and was probably nicer to wear on the inside because I can imagine polyester, she was sitting down, not a lot, but she was sitting down for some of the, yeah. I don't know if I'm trying to justify it to myself or whatever, because it's way past the fact that I've been married three years this year in September, but I, yeah. It, it, so I've ended up with two meters of uh, royal blue silk. Now, this needs to be a top of some description, doesn't it? And it needs to be a fairly basic top because working with this stuff is gonna be an absolute pig. So, may, ooh, the Ogden cami. Oh yes, I can see that. What do you think, Amy, especially, what do you think? Do you think this should be an Ogden cami? I, need, I mean, I obviously will need to make a muslin of the Ogden cami in a different fabric first to get the fit and construction down but oh yeah oh so nice so so nice given two meters i might be able to get two out of that ah oh. this next one is silk satin from beckford silks and it was my birthday present this year from mum mum and dad and it is city lights and it's beautiful and this is the reason that i wanted this particular print and i am going to make a skirt out of it now this one is just a knife pleated skirt and whilst i like that i've got three meters of this because i think this stuff is printed to order and three meters was the minimum order that mum could make so this is 90 pounds worth of fabric here so i think what i will probably end up doing is a pleated and gathered skirt so box pleats and then gathered behind it and use the whole three meters so yeah i think that's probably what i'm going to end up doing and it will probably be 27 inches long so i'm going to end up with a decent sized scrap left over that hopefully i can piece together something else out of so but yeah isn't it pretty so nice so nice Oh, this, this, this whole pile is making me so happy. So this is from Saudi Arabia. I love this, I love this so much. It is a velvet silk devore, and I actually have a crepe back satin in a light blue to go underneath it because I'm planning, now fingers crossed, fingers crossed I can find a picture of this online. If not, I have got a picture of it that I've had in a, I used to cut magazine clippings out all the time and stick them in books and I still do do 
I, well I did that until I stopped buying magazines I realized I was spending something like 30 pounds a month on fashion magazines and that 30 pounds could have gone towards fashion rather than the magazines and that was before Pinterest was really a thing and then Pinterest happened and it was like why am I spending all this money I can look online so I stopped doing that but I still have all of the clippings and I have like I'm looking at them now I have a couple of books over there that have different clippings in them of different things that I loved and I remember I'd go through and I'd give myself a tick next to things that I actually managed to buy and you know none, not all of it was super expensive there was I mean there was a Calvin Klein bra bracelet and some Gucci shoes which I still have up there but then there was things like office shoes and warehouse dresses and things like that but I'd see them put them in there and then if I did manage to or get around to buying them it would be like tick and yeah so it's kind of like what what they want you to do in the creator clo curated closet I've been doing that as long as I can remember I've enjoyed fashion for as long as I can remember so that was fun but I found this dress and as I say hopefully I have inserted a photo but I think I'll have to have taken a picture of it to insert it but I found this dress and when I saw this fabric in Saudi I was just like oh I could do that thing with that thing that I really like so that's what this one is going to be so I have three meters yeah so I um I, I can't because I bought this with that in mind, I can't think of anything else that I'd want to make with it. So yeah, really like that. Oh, it's so pretty. Oh, right. So this next one is from Singapore and it's a border print. I'm gonna have to kind of unfold it to show you because it's a giant border print. And it goes down and it's just solid black at the bottom and then yeah, it has right up to the top. It's so pretty. So, so pretty. Now we got this, as I say, in Singapore. My ex took me um, on a holiday for five days and this was the very wealthy ex. And so it was my first time ever flying first class on British Airways, which was just amazing. But he was determined that he wanted to go far away, but he had five days and it was down to me to book it. And he'd said Costa Rica or Singapore. And it was like, we have five days, in including travel. And he just gave me his credit card and he was like, book it. And I was like, great, okay. And I said to him, I was like, well, the only way that I am going to even be a decent human being at the other side is if I can sleep on the plane. And the only way that that's going to happen is if we're in business class. So I looked at British Airways and it was, they were doing a deal. So business class was x amount and then first class to upgrade to first class was an extra 600 pounds each now when the that's that that is a lot of money i know that i know that is a lot of money but we when the original flight ticket was something i think the flight tickets were something along the lines of two and a half thousand pounds each that extra 600 pounds was just like that's nothing sod it let's do that so we went first class and it was a f it was a flat bed that it was a seat but it turned into a flat bed and I slept and I had a proper night's sleep and I went to sleep I, as soon as we got to the airport I went on to Singapore time I went to sleep when we should and I woke up and I arrived as the, as it was morning there and I was a nice person at the end of it because I am hideous with no sleep and uh, jet lag I and yeah it's not pretty and if you've got time to kind of get into it if you've got a two-week holiday that's not too bad you can you can grin and bear it and get there and and I do and you know I don't I, I cannot afford and don't travel first class and never have since but that one oh, that flight was amazing and we stayed in raffles and we stayed in a suite in raffles the i think the entire holiday was something like ten thousand pounds i but it was one of those things he was i, I said to him is that okay and he was like yeah it's fine it's like okay um but with, there's a place called arab street in singapore where all the fabric shops are and he took me fabric shopping one day and i got this and then another lace that you'll see in another video and I think the bill was something like, I think it was 400 pounds for these two fabrics. And I, I saw this one on a mannequin and fell in love with it. And I was like, oh, three, back then three meters was my 
go-to length to buy so I was like I'll have three meters of it please and they rolled it out and they were like oh there's there's just over four do you want do you want the you know have, have the extra and he was like yeah sure no problem like this on that so I have four meters of this stuff now this the the shops over there they also just they're like do, we, do you want us to make it into dress for you we'll have that done for tomorrow and I was just like no I want to do it I want to do it and it's like okay so anyway that's that's this silk so I what I actually think I want to do with this is because it is a such a long border print I think I want to make a floor length kimono out of this because the 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 bit that goes up to the top it it's only in certain sections and then other sections are plain so i think i want that bit going right up to the top on the back and then plain um for like the sleeves i think that would be beautiful and yeah that's that's what i've had in mind for this for as long as i can remember but well when did we go to Singapore we went to Singapore five years ago now so yeah that's that's what I've had in mind for this now having said that there is the Victory Patterns Trinia dress which I do have which is a kimono style dress but I don't think that will work for the vision that I have for this fabric and, and I want to ma maintain that back panel of print as much as I possibly can so it would be really really simple kimono but I just, yeah, I think I think that's what that is going to be. That was an awesome holiday. We did like the rocket bungee and the bungee swing, and we went to the bird park, the animal park, and the night animal park. We went to Sentosa Island. Yeah, it was it was lovely. It was a really lovely holiday. Oh, we went to the Marina Bay Sands. We went to the giant den of sin, or the massive casino that they have there, and he won. So you know he was happy, but. That, that was an amazing holiday and that was an amazing experience of Singapore. I was very, 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 very lucky, very lucky to do that. And I, I'd go back to Singapore in a heartbeat, but I just know it's never going to quite be the same because I'm not going to get to go first class and I'm not going to get to stay in raffles. But that was that was an amazing holiday. And I love... He, he always said that I wasn't sentimental, but I, the, 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 I have a pair of shoes over there that he bought me in Monaco. I have this fabric and another fabric that he bought me and I have a couple of other silly little bits and pieces that he bought me that I just they, they will always remind me of him and whilst it wasn't the healthiest of relationships in the end it was it was fun it really was fun and he is a very special person to me so yeah that uh, yeah that that's that's my Singapore story anyway you come here to see fabric not watch me reminisce so anyway <laughs> next up Ah, now, this is from Saudi Arabia. It is a very sheer leopard print. Let's see if I can find a bit where I can show you how. Yeah, there we go. Oh, no, that's two layers. There we go. So, yeah, there you go. You can see it's very, very, very sheer. So this is silk as well. And I, they had this, this was this shop that we'd, so Singapore, uh, no, sorry, Saudi Arabia, they have their their shopping system, their town, their, their city is laid out in a grid and their shopping system is that if you want a date shop, all the date shops are on run, one road. If you want tyres, all the tyres are on one road. So if you need something, you can go to that place and they're all the same same thing shop after shop after shop they're all different shops all different businesses but the same thing is you know all in a row and they do the same with their malls and their malls they have fabric malls so they have multi-layer malls that are literally just fabrics there's nothing else in there just fabric shops at the moment just about saying that women don't have to wear an abaya unless they want don't unless they want to they're allowing women to drive the the country itself was great in some ways and very repressive in others and it has a less than spotless human rights track track record it's you know there is a lot that they need to work on but it always I, I amused me that there are all these women wearing head to toe black abayas but underneath they must have had the most amazing clothing on because I mean it's like that sex in the city scene you know when they're when they're in the sook in Dubai and they go back into the shop and then all the ladies are like and I have the latest Dior and I have the latest Valentino and I have La Croix. and it was you know they must have been like that because 
the the amount of sparkly beautiful fa that I fabrics that they have out there that I also have bought and will sh be showing you but mental absolutely mental so uh, one thing you couldn't really get was quilting cottons you couldn't get those at all but every you know luxury fabrics everywhere so there was this shop one of mum's quilting guild ladies had found and they were having a sale on silk and it was five pounds a meter and it was just this wall my apartment is eight and a half meters long it was about that much and it was just rolls and rolls and rolls and rolls and rolls and rolls and rolls of silk and it was all at five pound a meter so it was just like it was towards the end of the holiday and i'd already spent all of my money so mum really kindly said i will lend you some money so you can buy some stuff in here I was like, oh, thank you mum and the a lot of the prints were garish even for me and you know how much i like prints but then i discovered this one and i was just like oh, it's amazing now i've got four meters of it so hold it up whilst I now I've got two ideas for this now there was a lady called Uli on Project Runway and if I can find one of her style of dresses I'll put a photo up of it here and she used to do very flowy dresses but that would hold to necks but then they'd have lots of braiding details and things like that and I was thinking something along those lines for this or there is this religion dress that I have tried on and it was too short in the torso for me so the joy of making my own stuff is that I can make it longer but the the skirt was beautiful but the skirt has like two slits up the front and the, but the, because there's multiple layers when you walked it was only visible when you really walked so there's either the religion dress or a Uli inspired dress but I love this and again I don't think my skill level is high enough for me to execute either of those things to the level that I'd want to as yet so I'm working up to it I'm getting better I'm starting to work with you know fabrics that are much slinkier I I have been I've been properly sewing this time around for about five years five and a half years maybe six years I was just before just before I left London and I've been living here for four and a half years now so yeah I've been sewing for properly for about five years this time around and you know I've been doing it in the past but the, the stuff that I've been showing you is kind of like the stuff that I used to pick it up every do a weekend here or there and then not do anything for sort of seven months and then pick it up again so yeah about four and a half five years that I've been properly sewing so I'm getting to the point where I'm like yes I want to do this so that's my plan for my, my leopard print silk because that's just stunning and so beautiful and uh, yeah I look forward to the I, I look forward to the day where I can actually wear that rather than just take it out and stroke it as is although I could just wrap myself in it and use it as a giant scarf. Right these next two are the fabrics that I've had in my stash for the longest time and I didn't buy these mum bought me these and they are Dior silks and she got them from Kuwait when she was out in Iraq volunteering during the second Iraq war so they are silk satin but with a Devore panel and then they have this one it has tie-dye kind of effect bright colors down at the bottom but let's see if I can get a hand in because again I don't really want to unwrap all these because they're a pain in the proverbial to but so that yeah there's a sheer panel and then there's a much more opaque panel at the top and then it goes down into opaque down there so i think i've worked out what i want to do with these i have three meters of this one and i have two meters of the next one that i'm going to show you so let's not get biro on it because that would be bad okay so i have and i this is an old out of print pattern and i got it from somebody who was reselling it on amazon but it's this butterick pattern I, I i just for the longest time i couldn't work out what i wanted to do with these which is good because i can imagine back then i had no fear and i'd have cut into it and ruined it i know i would have so i'm glad that i couldn't work out what i wanted to do with these and now I think what I want to do is that butterick pattern because I can see this this part 
for the skirt portion and then this part for the top and then because it's got that sheer panel in the middle with the with the large drape on that dress i think that was going to look beautiful but again if you guys have any other ideas for that fabric let me know in the comments down below but i think it needs to, I, that i like the idea of that butterick dress i think that would look that would be a good use of the fabric because it is a border print this is the other one so this one has oh it's more of a blue colorway uh this this top part is blue. that one's very minty this one is ice blue and then it's got the dark blues and greens at the bottom and again it has those very sheer pieces oh behave do as you are told yes there's very sheer pieces in the middle as well so there's two meters of this one i think they that was the last of what they had on the bolt and mum's been by me so this was the second second of war in iraq so that's how long ago that was in 2005 so yeah i've had these for like 14 years in my stash kind of to get out and play with and look at every now and again and again this one I don't know what to do with I have absolutely no idea none whatsoever <laughs> this is what I was afraid of they're getting, getting a mind of their own come back here and do as you are told yeah so oh they're so pretty they're so so pretty I just yeah I like to get them out every now and again and stroke them and and also be like I have Dior I mean I don't have anything made out of it but I do have Dior <laughs> oh right next up so I know what I want to do with this but I can't find the perfect pattern so I'm gonna have to draft it myself but this is a yeah so it's a silk velvet and I have a meter of it and it's this beautiful red color so velvet and this actually goes with this embroidered silk de peony that mum got me from india so the velvet is from saudi arabia they'd uh mum had bought two meters of a chocolatey brown one and they'd accidentally no she bought three meters and they'd only cut two so we went back the next day and they were like oh very sorry what would you like and so uh, mum said I could have a meter of this and I was initially going to make cushions out of this because I quite like turquoise and red together but then I changed my mind when I saw it with this one and what I want to do is a so this butterick pattern I want the top of that but I want the top of the, the roundy bit to be more pointed and so this to be a cowl drape and then this to be the pointed waistband and then a five panel circle skirt on the bottom. That's what I want to make with these two. But I need to franken pattern that together myself because at the moment it does not exist. And I only have a meter of this red velvet and given the, the nature of the butterick pattern, the drape on that is actually quite long and then folds in on itself so that it's self lined, which makes perfect sense. But I need to have enough to cut the back panels out of the, this fabric as well. And I don't think I would have with that. So yeah, that's what I'm planning with that one and this one. So I have uh, four meters of this and that's gonna go with that one. So yeah this is really pretty really really pretty mum as i say got this from india when she was in saudi arabia she used to travel a lot for work for recruitment so she would be going all over the world so she'd spend a lot of time in indonesia malaysia india uh, south korea so she'd go fabric shopping in all of those places and fun for her because she enjoys fabric herself and then fun for her because she gets she enjoys buying fabric for me as well that's the and and for big bird she's bought big bird quite a lot of different things over the years as well right so i have this these scraps of this chartreuse green uh silk du peony and i have made a dress out of this which doesn't quite fit me but i've finished that last year i want to say and i haven't worn it yet because as i say it's just a bit too tight on me because it was a pattern that was drafted for me but i was about a stone lighter so it's, it's a wonder there's only a bit tight and i also had some organza that mum had bought this is from mum um that mum had bought for me and i made a two-tiered 
gathered petticoat to go under this dress and the dress it wasn't quite what I had in mind because the dress has a high low skirt but the high low is very minor and the petticoat that would have worked better if the petticoat had come right to the bottom of at the, the sorry if the dress had come right to the bottom of the petticoat at the back and then kind of poked out at the front that was what I had in my head but the back of the skirt wasn't long enough so the about that much of the petticoat shows all the way around and it doesn't look quite right so the petticoat's beautiful the dress is beautiful they can be worn independently of each other it's not a problem but I would like to try and find some more silk this colour to recreate what I did have in mind for that petticoat because the petticoat needs, it's one of those ones that needs to be seen but it does need to be with the right thing. But I have enough left of this, I've just got over, over just a metre and some scraps and I was thinking that I could make the Ralph Pink, there's quite a lot of plans for that Ralph Pink jacket, the Ralph Pink cropped jacket that I have traced out now so I need to make a muslin of it but yes I have just over a meter of this so I was thinking if I could find what I would really like to do is find a matching chartreuse velvet to go with it for the turn backs of the cuff and the collar I think that would look really cool or a satin possibly but I think the velvet would be cooler I'm glad you can't see how I'm spelling that next up is black silk dupioni now I did have five meters of this but I made a dress for a client out of it and they did pay me for the fabric but I haven't bought replacements for it in fact actually how much of this do I have let's have a look because it's looking like a bit more than I thought it that I had oh I've got a good three meters left I must have had more than I thought I had this is from Saudi Arabia all of these dupionis are Meh. getting there right. so I have three meters of black okay so you know how I was telling you earlier about Saudi Arabia and how they have malls for fabric well they also have silk departments in their supermarkets so there's a supermarket called Lulu's which is like Sainsbury's you know it's it's a food supermarket but you go upstairs and there's the silk department you know as you do so they had this silk dupioni and it's eight pounds a meter so you know like I've got quite a lot <laughs> and I had some red which I made my Christmas dress out of which you've seen have I made anything else out of it uh, oh, oh Nia, that's where we got Nia's uh, wedding dress fabric from that's why we could afford to buy her 10 meters of silk for her wedding dress because it was eight pounds a meter it wasn't like ridiculously expensive but yeah not sure what i'm gonna make with that i had planned because i did have more of this as i said i've made a customer's dress out of it i did have six meters so i had planned to make myself a dress with some of other lace that i've got in my stash as a lace overlay but I don't think I can do that anymore. So I think this is going to turn into a little black dress of some description or another. I could still get a full skirted one out of it, which is a possibility, but I also quite like the idea of a sheath dress out of this as well. So, hmm, maybe, not sure. Now I've got this sort of tangerine peachy orangey color, and I have three meters of this one. I'm gonna it's not tangerine is it it's more it is it's a pinker pinker red than or pinker orange than that salmon salmon colored smoked salmon yeah let's say let's say salmon now i think i bought this because it was eight pounds a meter at the supermarket and it was just one of those things that mum took me in here and i went oh, i need it um these particular ones aren't very wide but they are just beautiful and i know given this this crease here i know i probably should be rolling these up but you know what never mind not sure what i'm gonna make with this one but it's very very pretty this one <laughs> this one is actually very wide and yeah it's it's 150 wide and it's two-tone as you can see so it's lilac and lilac and mustardy kind of color or it's so it's, it's basically no it's royal blue on one end and then on the 
on the warp I can't remember if the warp or the weft is the sidewaysy bit but so it's royal blue one side and then it is mustard on the other and it comes out that that makes this beautiful lilac-y lilac-y colour and we got this this was not from Lulu's this was one from one of the fabric malls and we'd gone in and it was really really late on my second holiday and I'd seen this and I've got another lace that's coming up in a bit that kind of works with this although I'm thinking that lace needs a different colour altogether all, all but so I saw this and the it was the last four metres on the row and he was desperately trying to explain to us that it was wide and again his Arabic uh, our Arabic was awful and his English was just non-existent so we were we were like eight pounds a meter right well the 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 real equivalent of that so i can't remember what it was there's 17 reals to a pound what's eight times 17 that's 128 reals isn't it i hope i got that right my niece is going to be laughing it's the eight times table but no anyway so it was you know it was eight pounds a meter in the supermarkets and he was trying to explain to us that this was 12 pounds a meter and we're like no 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 it's eight and he was like, no, it's 12. And we we're like, no, it's eight. And he's like, no, it's 12. And he, he was packing this up and we had cash. So we got out the cash and gave him the cash for like, um, so that's 24. We gave him 48 pounds worth of fabric, for, for, of, 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 of currency for the four meters of fabric. And he, and he just, the little, little resigned look on his face. He's like, you know what? Just go, just take it, just go away. Please go away. <laughs> so yeah we taught this poor man into giving us this fabric for that much money <laughs> but it's really pretty and it's going to be a nice big full skirted dress of some description so but they, they they want you to haggle with them out there you know that was that was part of the fun that poor guy he's just like please leave please leave me alone go away <laughs> um oh right now this, there is very little of this left, but this is Big Bird's wedding dress fabric. So it's this, I mean, it's stunning. Absolutely stunning. Ooh, actually, hang on. There's a meter and 20 centimeters left of this. So I actually think, now we do have lots of scraps of this, but I think, this is going to be cushions for my house. I I want to do. I've I've made mum some um, cushions with embroidery in the middle and then uh, panels and sort of patchwork on the outside, and they're beautiful. And I want to make myself some versions of those with some of the embroideries that I have. And this is obviously my colour, so I think that's what this is going to be. So yeah, that's so pretty. It's so pretty. And I feel very fancy if I have silk cushions. Yes. Yes. So this next one is bought for me. It's three meters. We got it from Lulu's. And we actually thought that this, because, so mum, mum bought this and brought it back to the UK. And then I was going to make the wedding dress. And we went out the, we went out to Saudi and I don't think we took, a swatch of this and we went to this Aladdin's cave shop that's what we called it I can't remember exactly what it was but it it just had everything in it and again I think I've got a photo of me at just the Swarovski crystal counter um, but that shop went on and on and on and on but we went in to get trim and we ended up buying a silver and blue trim that went with this colorway not that colorway so this is this is a very turquoisey green blue and this is an electric blue we bought the wrong trim basically but it didn't end up being the worst thing in the world because I love that trim so I have three meters of this silk and I'm gonna have that trim as well so yes I it's going to be an evening dress of some description or another this the trim that I have is really really pretty I I have done a a video on some of my trims it was in my shop tour so I don't think I did it in detail but if you guys would like to see my trim box then let me know in the comments down below and I will happily go through that lot with you as well because there's some beautiful stuff in there but I know I have three meters of this and it's going to be an evening dress and then finally we have this 
Now, there is actually, I wonder where it's gone. There's some, there's some blue and purple silk missing because I was going to make the bridesmaids dresses out of that but I didn't have enough to make the two dresses that I needed in the style that both of us liked so Nia in the end went for the Peacocks Have Fab Pad silk that I had lots of instead so I have two lots of that blue and purple shot dupiani floating around somewhere hmm wonder where that's gone probably in a different pile that I just haven't noticed but uh, yes so anyway where were we this one I can't remember how much of this I have Ooh, more than I thought I did maybe it's this one that I only have hang on hang on no I do I have three meters of that one how much of this do I have then this was exciting I thought I only had a meter and a half of this I do not I have more <laughs> hang on Ooh, lots more Ooh, ooh, exciting so yeah there's four meters there well that's exciting i thought i had a meter and a half of that hmm so yeah this is going to be some kind of e evening dress <laughs> one of the things i really like about this fabric is that it's nice and easy to work with it behaves itself it frays like an absolute bugger but it does behave itself and one of the things that I have also found is that if you put any kind of stress on any kind of the seams they just they pop the seams will pop so I have always when I've made anything with these I've always mounted it onto another fabric like cotton lawn and actually when I made my Christmas red Christmas dress the bodice is mounted on cotton lawn and lined in cupro which feels amazing and the skirt is actually mounted onto calico because I really wanted that skirt to have body so yeah the skirt's mounted on calico and then lined with cotton lawn or interlined with cotton lawn so there's three layers in that skirt and it, it does it has a nice kick to it this is blue and black shot silk so and I have four meters that's exciting hmm. I'm gonna um I'm just gonna measure this because maybe it was this one that we bought the trim for and this is the one that I have a meter and a half of. Let's, let's check, shall we? Hi, Colin. Oh yeah, hang on. No, I've got three meters of this. Yeah, like I said. How bizarre. Oh well, not complaining. Not complaining in the slightest. Except that now I have to fold everything back up and put it all back together. <laughs> and uh, so yeah, that that's that's it for one of the piles of fancy fabrics that I have this the other piles the next couple are laces and crepe back satins um, on that particular one and then I do have another pile of cotton silk blends as well but yeah that was some of my super super fancy fabric there and I love I, I love this I love this so much it's there's so there's so many beautiful clothes waiting to be made there I need to, I need, what I need to do is work my way through the Dupionis because as I say they're nice to work with, they're, they're good, they behave themselves, I need to work my way through those and then I need to build up to the slinkier stuff so what I've got, I've, the, one of the largest piles of fabrics that I have to show you in here is slinky polyester type fabrics so I need to work with all of those to build up my confidence to then start tackling this lot and uh, I also need to find that pink and pink and blue uh, sorry purple and blue shot dupiani that I have because I have five meters of that somewhere so yeah I need to dig that one out as well but anyway that's uh, that's it for today's video I really hope you have enjoyed having a look through my my fabulous silks I don't have a problem actually you know what Claire when um, Claire was over today she she had a look at my stash and she went you know what your stash is not as big as my stash and so I feel better I feel better because she went and told me about how big her stash was and then she went and that's just the dressmaking side of things not even starting on the quilting one it's like i love you you're great brilliant thank you so anyway yeah my, my stash is large but it's not as large as some let's just say that so i really hope you've enjoyed today's video if you have please give it a thumbs up if you haven't yet please subscribe and i'll see you again very soon bye